Ghost Code Magazine welcomes in Ali Pekka from Amorphous. How are you doing? I'm fine, Keith. Thank you for asking. Uh, just doing some interviews here and uh, I'll call it a day after this, but it's all right. Let's have a great discussion, all right? All right, indeed. Thanks for making the time for us again. Very excited to talk about the new album, Halo, coming out on Atomic Fire Records, your brand new label with old friends who used to be a nuclear blast. And uh, yeah, I thought it was going to be very hard to follow up. Queen of Time, Amorphous is one of the most consistent and greatest bands. You know, you were there at the beginning. There was a hiatus, and now you're back for the last, you know, the last few years, which is wonderful to have you back in the group. I, I always wonder about a veteran band like Amorphous and how you guys work. Did you feel any pressure? Queen of Time was so universally loved. Did you feel a lot of pressure to like top it? Well, uh, I think not. We are rather not thinking of. Uh response for the album during the process <laughs> so uh we just do our things and uh fortunately there are like a pretty good songwriters in the band and uh we have plenty of material where to choose from and then we have uh, of course Jens as a producer who is making selections for the for the record so uh we can rely on uh, the machine behind amorphous as well as composers in the band so uh it's, we, we don't have any pressure and we don't take any pressure. At least I'm not doing that. <laughs> awesome. That's good to know. And uh, yeah, I just, yeah, uh, it's, it's, all, it's really amazing how, again, like I said, consistent the band has been over the years. Do you feel like, uh, you know, in the interim time from, from when you started the band to when you came back in, things have, uh, you know, changed at all? Is it the same it's always been in terms of working together? Well, yeah. Um... When I left, it was, I guess it was 99 or something. So uh, it was way different situation with the band because uh, it was a kind of a not very good time for metal music back then. Uh, uh, f I think the audiences started to fade a bit and uh, yeah, it was uh, the attitude toward metal music was not necessarily the best possible. <laughs> but but um, since Tommy Jotzen, came to the band, I think uh, it was kind of renaissance of Amorphous and uh, which is still going on. And it, I think it's getting uh, better and better all the time. So uh, we are kind of fortunate enough to work with great producers and uh, we can make tours. We can tour like three years in between the albums. So uh, we can make a living with the band and uh, then uh, we we can like we, we have prof professional stuff uh, around us when it comes to making shows or uh, going to the studio so uh, it's uh, very different from the 90s but of course it was um, uh, i think 90s as nostalgic manner because uh, that's when we created the musical style of morphis and uh, learned how to play in the first place and that's and we did it together and that's why we, we're like a, we stick so well musical wise playing wise right on uh yeah i think you know again i i feel like sometimes the more experienced bands the bands that have been around a long time uh it becomes more of a struggle it should be easier right over time like anything else that you create mastery with but I do feel like some of the more veteran bands, they over the time, it seems like whether they don't get along or, you know, things change. You, your your intention when you start a band, when you start a musical project, or any artistic project may change over time. But it just again, it seems like you guys have a very, uh, a very cohesive way of working together. It shows in the music. These, these songs are incredible, it's beautifully written album. Uh, I really can't wait for people to hear it. It's terrific. Uh, again, I really thought, I was like, wow, Queen of Time is right up there with the best Amorphous records. It's going to be so hard to do, to to just, you know, change or improve anything. And then I hear this record, I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't yeah, okay. with this record. It's so good. Yeah. Well, it's all, always up to the listener, uh, if you can call it improvement. But uh, of course, we have changed uh, between Queen of Time and Halo, uh, and the production is different as well. Uh, I think uh, Jens had a little bit uh, different kind of like view of how the album should be, and 
it is a little bit more stripped down, I think. It's a little bit more um, harder to get into, but still it's like uh, stands probably the test of time uh, very well uh, in order to that. Uh, and Queen of Time had lots of uh, orchestration and uh, different kind of guest musician. Uh, so, so I'm I'm kind of happy that uh, we are managing managed to uh, make a different kind of album and evolve in in some way. Right. It's important to uh, as much as you want to, you know, improve as just personally and also give the listener and your audience and your fans a new experience. It's important to satisfy yourself, right? I think uh, people fans forget that the very first thing you do musically is for you and uh you know it's for you you have to be happy with it. you have to get some satisfaction out of it that uh you know goes beyond just like what you hope to achieve as a goal uh so it's important that it keeps motivating you and stimulating you otherwise you wouldn't keep doing it um even yeah. if it was really great money which in you know metal it's okay it's not the greatest but it's okay uh, we're yeah. not pop stars here. You have to want. I always say like metal, heavy metal music, extreme music, underground music. You have to want to be there. <laughs> you have to want. Yeah, it. yeah, want yeah. It. Because uh, metal music is not commercial music, at least in my point of point of view. And that's that's the secret of Amorphis in the first place. Because uh, we didn't need to please anyone, or we didn't try to uh, need to try to uh, fall into any category when we started. Of course, we were a death metal band in the first place, but then we started to experience and uh, make ex experimentations. And uh, it was kind of name name of the game in Finland, at least, to try to make as original music as possible. Uh, and if you listen to death metal bands from the 90s, they are not sounding uh, the same at all. Like, uh, for example, Carcass and Tomb and Amorphis and uh, Xusma, Funeber and uh, Morbid Angel, Paul Trover, uh, all death metal bands, but uh, they sound quite different, I think. <laughs> so uh, it's like a, uh, we don't need to write music for commercial sense. We just please ourselves first and uh, hope that people will enjoy it as well. But uh, I think that's the... Uh, the secret of it because if uh, people senses if band enjoys what they're doing at least i do <laughs> right it's important and uh so yeah uh again halo i i have my favorite songs already on this record that i'm gonna i keep going back to i try to listen to the record a few times uh, at least before interviewing anybody and then i go back to individual songs that i really like so of course i like on dark waters the moon when gods came the Wolf, and of course, the ep the final track is incredible. Uh, My name is Night. Do you have any favorites so far? Well, you pretty much named them, I guess. <laughs> well, Nude Wars, of course, is a great track opener of the of the uh, album, and the Moon is one of my favorite Amorphis songs, like from the whole back catalog, I think, <laughs> by now. And uh, well, My name is Night is probably one of my favorites. I cannot say yet if it's the best song in my opinion. But uh, usually it takes like a couple of years for me to uh, uh, review the album. Uh, and uh, it's too near probably right now after the process. And uh, uh, you should give it a little bit of time. Uh, and uh, for example, I, I cannot listen to so to two albums which I was involved in uh, ten years before this because uh, they are too near somehow. It takes time for your own stuff. <laughs> right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think I think it's interesting. You know, again, like I, I think people, journalists, fans, they don't realize like what an artist goes through. Like, there's a whole separate relationship to the album that they have that is not the same thing as you know i love a record comes out we get it in the mail or in our digitally and we spend time with it and then we come see the band and maybe they play some of those songs but we don't really i think it's hard to appreciate the, the process that an artist goes through with their own music it's really it's really interesting and every every band is different right and everybody's yeah. experience is different and um 
So I think, you know, there's an interesting balance there in terms of your relationship to the music. And I know that some bands work so hard, especially in this time of the world where there wasn't a lot of touring the last couple of years, where you're so close to the process. Like, this is all we have right now is this album. We're making this album. You might be sick of the album by the time you go to play it live, or you might be like, this is amazing. We're getting to hear, you know, see it through the audience's faces and ears for the first time in a whole new way than when we envisioned it or when we recorded it. So, you know, it's it's a journey. We're all on together as lovers of music, you know? Yeah, yeah, but uh, when it comes to us, it's like a relatively short uh, process when it comes to the uh, album production. Because, um, for example, I heard lots of the songs not like more than maybe two months before before we entered the studio. So uh, they were kind of new al- new songs for me uh, throughout the process. So uh, it's a little bit different from... Uh, from the back back in the days, like uh, when we practiced the songs together for almost two years before entering the studio, but now you can actually hear the songs like uh, just before the session. So uh, it's kind of a different thing, but uh, yeah, you're kind of right with that. It's like uh, we have totally di- different kind of perspective for our music than the general listener probably. But still, uh, we were also more involved with mixing process and uh, production process uh, in the early days than we are today. Because Jens is um, getting the files and uh, he's editing the tracks and uh, then he's probably sending the ready mix to the band like uh, six months after the session. So uh, it's kind of a... (laughs) it was a surprise to hear Halo at the first place. It it was like it sounded pretty much different uh, than I expected it to be. So, uh, but it's also part of the fun to uh, have such surprise as a musician. Right, you want to be surprised and and interested still on the first listen or the second listen. And I and like you said, I imagine there's a lot of pre-production, so the songs come in pretty much written and ready to go. Do you spend a lot of time? Do you need to spend a lot of time at this part point in your career dialing in your sound, or do you know basically like, oh, here's how I get my tone, and you know I'm ready to go. Same, you know, your favorite bass, your favorite settings, and just yeah, jam. Yeah, well, I'm practically using uh, the same gear. Uh, and I've done, done it like for the last 20 years, like Ambex stack and uh, chips and Thunderbird bass. So uh, that's what, what I've used. And uh, also Sandberg bass I used uh, on, on this uh, album. So, uh, but it's uh, quite clear for me nowadays uh, what I'll do in the studio because I have the uh, setup for the amp uh, already there. It's been still for 20 years. So that that's how it should be, <laughs> and uh, this time I didn't use any effects, so it was just a cable to the amp and uh, let's go. So it was a pretty clear uh, process, but I don't know what Jens did to the sound. Maybe there is some ambic left still, but uh, I think he reamped it as well because he will get the DI DI sound as well. But what I've learned throughout the years, I think when it comes to the bass, it's like uh, you can get pretty good sound from DI only. You don't even need any amplifiers. But uh, it of, of course, it depends if you need distortion or whatever. But I usually I prefer clearer bass sound. But this time, uh, Jens chose to use distortion on it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> It worked for Lemmy, it will work for everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> a little distortion's good in the bass. I, I'm a big fan. So yeah, this is this is a really exciting time. And of course, again, Atomic Fire is, you know, this to me really exciting uh proposition. And Amorphous has been on, you know, just a handful of labels in their whole career, you know, partially because of the success and partially I think you know, like anything else, it's a business, right? It's a it's a business relationship. So I'm personally very excited about Atomic Fire. I don't I don't I don't think anybody I'm not sure that anybody else in the business is as interested in it as I am or the fans may be. But it is a really interesting thing when a, a label goes through kind of a you know create 
it's not a brand new label in terms of to everybody else in the business. Everybody knows the principles and the and the amazing already. Amorphous is one of the key signings, like a, a key first announcement. Literally, Amorphous and Mishuga. So those are two yeah. pretty incredible, great names to start off your label with. Yeah, it tells you something when uh, <clears throat> there's an old <laughs> a record label and uh, it's getting sold, and uh, then the original guys are forming a new new label. It like uh, shows some kind of enthusiasm to the music that they want to go on with it because uh, I'm pretty sure that they wouldn't need to do it financial in financial sense. So uh, I'm pretty happy to be part of it because uh, uh, I think we've worked with Markus Steiger, for example, from Nuclear Blast from the day one. Of course, we are it's like a, I'm grateful to Real After Records as well for signing us in the first place. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's really important to stay loyal in some way and uh, keep cooperating with the uh, people who have showed their capability to do things right. And they are our friends as well. Yeah, it's important to have <laughs> partners you can trust. It's so tough out there. And uh, yeah. you hear so many horror stories. So congratulations on this. It's a very exciting time for you, for the Thank label, you. for the band. Obviously, the, the you know, just as we wind this down, I want to give you back your evening. You know, touring is on the horizon. It's been a very stressful, tough time. Bands make money on tour. So I am hopeful and very excited to get Amorphous out on the road all over the world, festivals, America, everything. Uh, are you, are you, I'm sure you're looking forward to getting back out in front of the crowds and just doing what you, know, doing what you do. Definitely. Uh, yeah, we will start the tour in, uh, in North America in April, as you might know. Uh, hopefully we can do all the shows. <laughs> you never know these days because uh, it's kind of a uncertain times we are living so uh, but we have lots of plans we are aiming to tour three years from now on uh, at least I, I think uh, and let's hope that majority of those tours and shows will happen I happen to know that, that we have plans for the whole year until the end of this year so uh, uh, we are trying to tour as much as possible uh, just like we did with Queen of Time. We are toured for, uh, we just peeped to home uh, and had our suit suitcases waiting beside the door <laughs> and jumped to the other tour after that. So uh, that's how we hope it, it's gonna be this time as well. Us too, I can't wait to see you guys. And again, congratulations on this amazing album, Halo, February 11th. On Atomic Fire Records, Ali, Pekka Lane, thank you so much for hanging out with Ghost Cult. Congratulations to Amorphous on all your success. And I'll see you again in person next time, hopefully with a beer. Yeah, yeah, let's agree on that. <laughs>